Best known for his silver arm, forged by Credna and Dian Cat, Nuada, or Nuadu, was represented as the first king of the Tuatadanan in surviving sources. It was he who led them to Ireland and won the land from their cousins, the earth spirits, the Fir Bullock. But who really was he and what did he represent? If you'd like to support the channel, please check out our Patreon page where you can make video requests and a portion of your donation goes towards acquiring clan lands. Now the great J.R.R. Tolkien may have been inspired by this ancient god when he was asked to utilize his linguistic skills in order to try to understand the name Nodens. That is how Nuada's name appears in Romano-British sources. And interestingly enough, this may have even led to the inspiration for the One Ring, Sauron's ring from Lord of the Rings, because there was also a ring found at the site, and there was a curse associated with it. So the person who lost the ring was cursing anyone who had stolen it from him. And so this might have actually come up in a conversation between Tolkien and Sir Mortimer Wheeler, who was discussing the site with him. And some people believe that this actually was part of the inspiration behind the ring. But anyway, Tolkien believed that the name Nodens was linked to a Proto-Germanic word meaning to seize or to catch or go fishing, and ultimately back to a Proto-Indo-European word meaning to bind or to ensnare or to tie knots. So all words relating to catching or seizing, binding, holding, catching. To Tolkien, this meant that the god was a hunting deity, but I think not. Rather, it seems to me that Nuada reflects similar ideas and concepts around ancient sky deities like Varuna, who is likewise linked to water and to binding. Now, the Temple of Nodens in Lydne preserves this aquatic connection because there's iconography at the temple and it's very much associated with water. And there was in fact a crown that the priest would wear there that was recovered. And it depicts a figure who is riding across the waves in a chariot. And he has a kind of crown on his head and he's riding across the waves. And this seems to invoke a god that is associated with water. Now, it can't be said with certainty that this figure represented on this crown is Nuada, but there is another figure who is also on part of the crown that is fishing. And this fishing individual or deity also appears to have potentially one arm, or at least you can only see that they have one arm. Now, this is also interesting because in later Arthurian myth, there is a figure called the Fisher King. I won't deal with that specific possible connection in this video, but it's worth mentioning. Now, also located at the temple site are many votives of figures of hounds. So you have a connection with water, a connection with hounds, and there is also a strong connection with a potential healing cult. And there may have been a chamber in the temple where devotees could go and sleep in order to receive prophetic dreams. Now, as it turns out, all three of these things are related to directly to Nuada in Irish myth, and we're going to see exact examples of that. Now, the main story about Nuada is that he is the first king of the Tuatadanan, and that he leads them to Ireland and leads them to victory over the fear bullock. But in the process of that battle, he loses his arm and is thus unable to remain on as king. This leads to the rise of Bress or Brass and ultimately to the victory of Lug. Now this general story arc is eerily similar to the same story arc in Greek myth. 
where Uranus is the primordial sky god. But he is emasculated and his role is then stolen by Kronos, who then must be defeated by Zeus. Now that doesn't mean that all of the gods are identical to those of the Greek story, but it suggests that either the Irish one is borrowing from that template or they have a, a very, very ancient similar origin. And I would tend towards the latter because if they were borrowing, we would expect probably that they'd be borrowing more than simply the story arc, that there would be significant elements of overlap, but most of the elements are different. In the battle against the Fear Bullock, Nuada is presented as being extremely fair. So he first offers to split Ireland in half with them, but this offer is refused. He then prepares for battle, but the Fear Bullock complain that they do not have equal equipment to the Tuatadanan. So artificers are sent over to the Fear Bullock to produce weapons for them so that they all have equal amounts of weapons and equal numbers of troops on the battlefield. So the battle being presented and led and organized by Nuwada is one of complete equality. And perhaps here it's important to mention that the god that he was linked to in Roman Britain was Mars. Even though he had water iconography in his temple, he was linked to Mars consistently. Now some have suggested he was also linked to Neptune, but the inscription that they are basing that assumption on is very, very ambiguous. It does not contain the name Neptune, it only contains the letter N, so it could really be anything. So he was certainly thought to be linked to battle, and governing battle, and likely the rules that surrounded organized conflict. And George Dumazil pointed out that this might be in parallel to the situation of Tyr in Norse myth. Now I don't know enough about Tyr to really say that conclusively, but it does seem that both gods were primordial sky deities of some kind. Both of them are associated with losing an arm or a hand. Again, this doesn't mean that the gods are identical, it simply means that they share similar ideas or concepts because those ideas and concepts were shared by Indo-European peoples. In relation to Nuwada governing these sorts of strict rules of engagement, of facing the opponent on equal terms, of matching weapon to weapon, this is directly contrasted to Lug. In the Laura Gavalda Eirin, it says that one of the reasons why they burnt their ships after coming to Ireland was not only so the Fomoirians couldn't follow them, but so that Lug couldn't follow them and take the kingship from Nuwada, because they wanted to win Ireland without deceit, without trickery. But this deceit or trickery isn't really what we would think of it. It doesn't mean that Lug is this trickster god. It is, in fact, that he simply fights to win, whereas Nuada fights according to set rules and regulations. In the second battle of Moigtura, Lug actually makes fun of this, in a way, when he's chiding his warriors, the other gods, to fight more effectively. And he tells them to the, something to the effect that they need to stop fighting blow for blow because this is the way to defeat. And this is one of the reasons why Nuada has a sword and Lug has a spear slash javelin. And it's probably better to think of it as a javelin because he is always throwing this spear. This spear is a distance weapon. He throws it and it fights by itself. It hits anything that, it, that it's cast at and it can return to his hand with a call. So it's much more akin to a bow than it is to a spear. So while Nuada is representing this aspect of the warrior where you're fighting man to man, you know, right up close in combat, 
on equal terms. Lug is representing this element of battle where you are in fact trying to deceive the enemy, trying to win, trying to achieve victory without yourself getting killed. So you are casting spears or arrows or slings, you are using distance weapons, you are using your intelligence, you are using cunning and strategy. Which is also why Lug beats Nuada in Fichel over and over again every time they play. So this is one key element of Nuada, that he represents this law. And I think that we can we could say probably that it represents a kind of cosmic law as well, that he is in charge of governing, and that he cannot violate. Now in Surviving Irish Myth there isn't a lot that connects Nuada distinctly with water unless we accept that Nuada is also the same figure as Nechten, and this may well be the case. Now some people have tried to argue that Nechten is directly cognate with Neptune, but I don't think that 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 etymology actually works. I think it's very much more likely that Nechten derives from the word Necht, the old Irish word Necht, which means to clean or to wash, and refers to purity, which is of course what Nechten's well is associated with, uh, cleansing one of impurity, cleansing one's sins, in fact. And again, this is another direct connection with Varuna, who also frees men of their sins. And we see this aspect of cleaning and water in, I think, most religions, period, not only Indo-European ones, that the washing of oneself with water is also equivalent to washing one's sins or transgressions away. Now, while Bowen is the river itself and the goddess, whom is married to Nechten. Nechten is the source of the water. The well is the ultimate source. And the river, Bowen, is then said to form or flow into every single major river in the world. So, tracing that back, it makes Nechten's well the source of all the water, or all the rivers at least, in the world. Now, as already mentioned, Nuada has it one of the tre three treasures of the gods, or four treasures if you include the stone, but his treasure is the sword. It is also generally thought to be the sword of light, and this may well be the case. If we are tracing this idea back that there is this common link between Nuada and gods like Mitra or Varuna, which was the assertion of Dumazil, and I think, in fact, that he was quite right in this, that there is a link between these deities and light and the sun. And that is because they are sort of the grand celestial deities. Deities like Indra, for instance, that come a little bit later, are really not celestial deities. They are atmospheric deities, generally associated more with storms and such. But a god like Varuna, or as we will see, Nuada, is really more associated with the celestial realm. Now, in some ways, for Nuada, this comes to take on a Hathonic sort of aspect, in that he becomes more associated, it seems, with the knight. Hence his silver arm. Now, my argument is that the silver arm is in some way reflective of the moon and his relationship to the moon. The moon likewise is often connected to the control or flow of waters in association with the tides and of course with the color silver. Nuada is also called the great white champion of the Tuatha and this may also be a reference to the moon. This isn't again to say that he is a moon god, simply that he is associated with the moon because he's associated with the night sky, and likewise the stars. And this is exactly the same as Uranus in Greek myth. Now what Dumizil gets perhaps wrong or he gets hung up on is a distinction between Nuada and Lug. 
because he really wants to fit Lug into the model of Varuna. But even though Lug has many aspects that are associated with Varuna, for instance, he is the fierce one, he is the, the fiery one, the angry one. And Dumazil has this structure that he wants to say that the god Mithra, or the framework of Mithra, is always associated with the kinder, gentler god uh, who is associated with the day. And there is this fierce, terrifying god who's associated with the night. So Nuada is associated with the sword, and the sword he obtains from the island of Findias. Now, Findias means pure or white. It, it most likely means purity and relates exactly to the same theme we were just talking about with the well. And he is taught at this island by the teacher Uskius, meaning water. So again, there is this idea of purity and water associated with Nuada. Now the other thing is that when Nuada and the Tua de Danon first come to Ireland, it's said, that it's said in every source that they cover the sky in clouds or they cover the sky in smoke. Regardless, they come in dark clouds. It's very adamant about this. And they cover the sun. And in some way, this is supposed to relate also to preventing Lug from coming. Lug perhaps being more correlated to the bright sky and representing Nuada being associated with the darkened sky, the clouded sky. Now, Nuada's wife is generally given as Maha, and Maha is also given to be the wife of a god called Neved, who was the primordial ancestor of the Tuatadanan and the Fir Bolog, but this is not at all proven. Now, in some versions of the Laura Gavala Eren, it actually says something very interesting that links Nuada to Lu, and it seems, in fact, to reference Lug as being some kind of angry emanation of Nuada in the way that it speaks. And there was a great swelling of anger in Nuada at Agitlau. Lug, the complete, he was a fierce bloody wolf to him in the battle of Maig Turit. In the second battle of Maig Turit, it says that Nuadu fierce-eyed will be a great champion of the battle. This is, of course, in one of the many untranslated sections. But interestingly, it uses Nuadu, which is often more likely to be the case when it's using it as a, as a noun rather than a name. And, then, and it appears in a lower case, so the N is not capitalized, which implies that it's not being used to refer to Nuada, but is being instead refer being used as hero or warrior or champion his name being used in this way and it most likely refers to Lug because later on in the story he directly uses the word that he is the warrior of fierce eyes and so we see again that there is this very very strong connection and Lug joins in the battle against Balor right as soon as Nuada and Maha fall. So there is a connection there. And Maha herself has a connection in the Dinshenahas, where it uses this very poetic re language to refer to her and say that she is the equal or the balance of Lug. And Cúhollán says of himself that he is the Nuadu of the affliction of hounds. And what it means is that he is the champion or the warrior of the affliction of hounds, which is rabies, which is battle madness. So these figures, either Lug himself or associated with Lug in a significant way, are being referred to as Nuada in some way but also with the Hound, and associating the Hound with Nuada. This probably isn't a coincidence given the archaeological finds that we were discussing earlier. But to go back to those finds, there is a, another significant connection, because I mentioned that there was a dream chamber 
or very likely a dream chamber at the sanctuary of Nodens. And what most people don't realize is that Nuada Eregidlau was in fact given to be the son of Erevan, the ancient ancestor of the Gaels. So in the Milesian sort of version of the coming to Ireland by the ancestors of humans, essentially, Erevan is supposed to be a human king, or the first human king of all Ireland. But his son is, in several different sources, confirmed to be Nuada Eregidlav. And it says specifically Eregidlav. And his alternate name was Irlfa, which means... Well, I haven't been able to figure out what the first part of the name means, but Fa, or Foth in older pronunciation, was a seer, a prophet. And in fact, it's a word that's incorporated into um, Christian translations of the Bible. So, Fa becomes the word for prophet in Irish, in, in terms of the Christian prophets. And it was said that all good kings of Ireland traced their lineage back to him and having spent extensive amounts of times going through the old genealogical tracks this is largely the case it is either to him or to Lug or to often to both and one will often be presented as the father of the other so Lug is sometimes the father of Nuada, sometimes he is a great grandfather, sometimes he is a son. Either way, they are almost always present in the same genealogical tracks. And in the story of the Milesians, of course, there is Lugid Mac Ich, but anyhow, the fact that he is referred to as a Fath means that he was thought of as being a prophetic god. And so this also links back to the idea that he had a dream shrine or a dream chamber where presumably the god would come to one in their sleep or present dreams uh, for the visitor to be interpreted. Now this of course is a melding of traditional Celtic practice with Roman practice but nevertheless there are elements that you can see in Irish stories where this sort of dream interpretation takes place. There are several tales where druids are asked to interpret dreams for people. And so this sort of thing was likely an authentic tradition, not simply a Roman import. So although the Laura Gavala Erin presents a picture where Lug becomes king after Nuada, the original tale seems to be different. Rather, there is a power-sharing arrangement between Lug and Nuada, where one serves as king and the other sits as the Ard Olav. And effectively, they were joint kings. So the basic rundown is that Nuada reflects a king who is not able to keep his power without the fierceness or the intelligence of his second half, effectively. Now, he represents the law and the rule, but he needs his other part in order to enforce that. So, this is the dynamic that Dumazil was mentioning between this fierce god and this god of law and contract. Now, it doesn't break down the same way that Dumazil was expecting it to, but it does break down into these two different parts. And Lug is the enforcer part, and Nuwada is the more laid-back deity. And Lug, in fact, directly insults him for this reason in the surviving tale of the children of Turin, where he is angry with Nuwada for not taking more hostile action against the Fomoirians. In Welsh myth, we have this mimicked in the tale of Lleith is thought to come from Neith, which comes from Nodens. And Lleilis is thought to come from Lle, which is Lug. Now, in this tale, Lleith is faced with 
a catastrophe to his kingship that he has these three plagues that are going to destroy the land and he needs them dealt with but he doesn't know how to do it and so he calls upon his brother Thaelis who is ruling the kingdom of the Gauls and he comes and helps his brother and tells him how he can defeat these plagues we won't get into the breakdown of this whole tale but suffice to say it's a sort of toned down version of the second battle of Moitura with no real action taking place it's simply the king needs help the king gets his brother to help him his brother's advice secures the kingship and this is basically what Lug does now interestingly after Lug comes to Tara and Nuada is sitting as king and he's having a great feast after just returning to kingship after having acquired his silver arm and it should be said here that Nuada's arm is his left arm this is significant because of the association with left-handedness in Indo-European culture going all the way back certainly to the Rig Veda and almost certainly before the left-handed side is the sinister side and this is even made a significant point in myths associated slightly at least with Nuada uh, through Nechtin's well right his wife goes around the well left-handed or counter the sun and this causes the well to rise up and to smash her down and kill her now as we've pointed out before that if it's true and I think that it is that Nuada is in some way linked to these figures like Varuna that he is associated with cosmic law and therefore for his wife to go counter to that law by going left hand wise around that is an grievous sin and that is why she is destroyed specifically because it's related to him and we might see the well as in fact being a metaphor for him striking her down now unlike Varuna Nuada doesn't become a god of the sea there is a god of the sea and he doesn't take that role he always maintains his celestial position but within the celestial realm there is an upper realm and there is a lower realm because the world whether you're conceiving it as being a flat disk as originally did or as a globe nevertheless there is a upper and a lower and this is ultimately why I think Varuna becomes associated with being a god of the sea is because being a god of waters and being a celestial god where do waters flow right they flow down and so Varuna is positioned at the very bottom of the celestial circle that surrounds the earth now in this alternating kingship with Lug what's interesting is Nuada specifically states that he will rise before him for 13 days now these are not the 13 days of the battle because of course they prepare for the battle for many years I think it's over seven years they're spent preparing for the battle and the battle takes you know who knows how long it's hard to say so these 13 days seems to relate to some sort of cycle of the moon and the sun in my opinion but the exact relationship would simply be speculation Hesiod uh, tells us that in the Greek tradition the first 13 days of a month were auspicious to Zeus and this likely relates to some phase of the lunar cycle where the moon is in waxing and the waxing phase is considered to be more auspicious than the waning phase so Nuada is associated with the left hand and his arm is cut off at the shoulder and replaced with a silver arm now interestingly in Vedic myth Varuna is also associated with the left arm he is the left arm Mitra is the right arm anyhow we'll sum up here and say that Nuada it's it's very likely that Nuada 
corresponds to a large degree with Varuna, with Uranos, and other such deities in the Indo-European tradition. Although there are differing aspects and certainly differing mythology, in no way are Luganuada directly comparable to Mitra Varuna in anything other than structural analysis. They are both celestial deities. They both have association with uh, the sun, moon, and the celestial realm. But in mythology, they are far different. Now, this does in some way mimic the presentation of Mithras in surviving Persian mythology, however. A deity that is strongly linked to the sun and who is also a warrior god who is linked to the contract and Lug's name is postulated to be related to Lug, meaning oath, but that is of course just one of various possibilities. But if this is the case, it is simply another argument in favor of this correlation between Nuada Lug and Mitra Varuna, because Dumazil wasn't even aware of this, that the names really do kind of link up. If Lug's name does relate to the oath, then this would seem to directly correlate him with Mithra. And Nuwada, as we've already seen, has this relation to binding and capturing or seizing that would seem to directly relate him to Varuna. Nuwada has a potential association with the moon and the night sky and water. Lug is well known to be associated with the sun. Both are likely associated with fire, but Lug certainly uh, very associated with fire and heat in general. And there's this interesting dynamic between Mitra and Varuna where one is said to be the light, one is said to be the heat of the fire. And then you have the sword of Nuada being this sword of light, but you have the spear of Lug being this hot, fiery spear, and Lug being associated with heat and called the one who never cools. So although it doesn't exactly work out the way Dumazil thought, I do think that this general association is correct, but it's more likely that Nuada is more similar to Varuna and that Lug is more similar to Mitra. But you can't simply read a Vedic hymn and say, well, this is exactly the way Nuwada is conceived, or this is exactly the way that Lug is conceived from those hymns. It doesn't work that way because the way that they came to understand the gods and combine different aspects of different deities uh, it makes them very, very different in their overall functions. But the structure is the same, and the dynamic between the two is very similar. But in Vedic hymns, Mitra has become a mere shadow of Varuna. He barely has an independent identity left. But in Irish sources, Lug has this fierce warrior aspect, but he's also very much tied with the sun. So he combines aspects of gods that probably were broken off and made into independent deities, but at one point in the ancient past were simply one deity. For instance, Savitar is often linked to Mitra, is often linked to Pushan, is often linked to Agni, right? Probably in origin, most of these gods were the same deity. And if they were, that deity would be very, very close to Lug as presented in surviving sources. But the personality-wise, it's, it's different as well, because in personality, Varuna is the one to fear, but in Celtic myth, Lug is the one to fear. The personalities, the aspects are, are a little bit reversed, even though Nuada f functionally seems to be more like Varuna. And it would seem that the reason that Lug has to be the one to destroy the Fomoirians is specifically his relation to light and fire that he can basically burn them away because they are dark beings. In fact, they are called men of Africa in later version. So they were conceived of as being dark, as being black. Anyhow, 
this has been a long video and if you've made it through this, I'm impressed. I hope you found it interesting and informative, however. It is the result of a lot of work, and so if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I would very much appreciate it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Gurv me lamagat as eschat marigoni shaskohard.